In this video, we'll be looking at the uh, gas exchange system in uh, bony fish. One thing to notice is actually that the way that fish breathe is actually very similar to how mammals breathe. So in uh, the mammalian gas exchange system, as you would know, it's about changing the thorax volume and then hence changing the thorax pressure uh, and then comparing it to the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, the air can come in or out of the lungs. So if you're trying to breathe in, it's about expanding your thorax, increasing the volume, hence decreasing the pressure, lower than the atmospheric pressure, therefore the air flows in. And then it's the opposite if you're trying to breathe out. For fish, it's pretty much the same thing. Except that this time we have to consider two different chambers, which is the mouth, the buccal cavity, and also the opercular cavity, which is between the gills and the outside bony layer of the operculum. So imagine if we've got a fish here and we're looking from the top down. So uh, in the beginning, so this is when the mouth is open. So this area here is the buccal cavity. And then we've got the operculum, which is the bony uh, uh, flap on the outside, which protects the gills. And then we've got the opercular valve, which basically opens and closes the opercular cavity, which is this space here. So we've got the gills there and then uh, we'll then look at the rest of the system. And actually we can largely separate them into three different stages. So we'll look at first stage here. So in the first stage is that the mouth opens. So because the uh, buccal cavity is expanding, therefore we say that the buccal cavity is increasing in terms of the volume and therefore it is decreasing in the pressure. And because the buccal cavity pressure is lower than the outside, so therefore the water will move from the outside surrounding um, area, so let's say the lake, into the buccal cavity, down the pressure gradient. So in the beginning part is literally about how the water is flowing into the mouth, into the buccal cavity. So that's step number one. Then here comes step number two. And step two is basically talk about how the water will move from the buccal cavity and across those gills. The opercular cavity follows what the buccal cavity does. So the opercular cavity here would also expand. But the way that they do that by expanding, uh, they also keep the valve shut. So you're forming a very specific enclosed space here. So by expanding the opercular cavity, you are again increasing the volume there and decreasing the pressure. And this time, because opercular pressure is even lower than the buccal pressure, therefore the water will move from the buccal cavity into the opercular cavity across the gills. And as they move across the gills, then they would do gas exchange there as well. And we say this movement is again down the pressure gradient. Like I said, pretty much the same as how the uh, mammalian system works. Then the third one is about how the water actually moves out. So this time, the buccal cavity and the opercular cavity both do the same thing, right? They Both of them would constrict, so they do the opposite. And by constricting, they are decreasing the volume in both of them and increasing the pressure in both of them. So therefore, all of the water that was still in the buccal cavity and in the opercular cavity would be rushed out. And when they were constricting, the mouth is basically closing. So remember, the buccal cavity is basically the mouth. So if it's constricting, the mouth is closing. Now, because the pressure in the opercular cavity and the buccal cavity are both so high that it's much higher than the outside water pressure, therefore the water will push the valves open and then it will leave the opercular cavity to the outside. And again, it's down the pressure gradient. It's a really, really good phrase to use in exams. And that is how the fish would breathe or do gas exchange. So in the beginning, the mouth opens, the buccal cavity expands by lowering the buccal cavity wall on the, on the lower side of it. It increases the buccal cavity volume, decreasing its pressure. Therefore, the water will move into the buccal cavity down the pressure gradient. Then the opercular cavity would also expand with the valve shut, so therefore the volume here would increase and the pressure would decrease, therefore lower, and it's lower than the buccal cavity pressure, therefore the water will move into the opercular cavity across the gills, which can then do the gas exchange down the pressure gradient. So it's actually at this step where the gas exchange actually occurs here. 
Then the last thing, the third stage, is that both the buccal cavity and the apocular cavity constrict inwards. Therefore, it decreases the volume and increasing its pressure to the point it's higher than the outside water pressure. Therefore, the water will push open the valves and then leave the apocular cavity to the outside down the pressure gradient. And once that is done, they would then reverse, go back to the beginning. Uh, the valves would shut, the buccal cavity lower wall would, would go down and opens the mouth and then ex buccal cavity expands and then we repeat the whole process again. And this is the breathing mechanism in bony fish. If you want to know a bit more about the gas exchange system, then you will need to look a little bit more about the structure of the gills, about how the gills are stacked in gill plates and the, f and the filaments and the lamella and the uh, capillaries and also the countercurrent system, which we can cover in another video.